guys, Jason from PC Fun. Today I am coming to you from beautiful northern Wisconsin, one of my favorite places in the country to chase big fish. Today we're going to be going out for really big smallmouth. So we're talking three to five pound smallies, and we're actually going to go over my favorite technique to catch those big smallies. That technique is drop shotting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to release all the secrets that I have today. I'm going to tell you what baits I use, how I rig them, the entire setup from the line to the hooks to the rod to the reel. We're going to talk about everything in this video. So stay tuned, check out these big fish, and check out how to catch them. We're going to start from the bottom of my rig and work our way up. I'm going to show you how to properly rig a drop shot so that it can be effective for catching big smallmouth. Now what you'll notice here is a bunch of different weights. Now when you're going out drop shotting for any sort of fish, but really for big smallies, there's a variety of different weights that you can select from. You know, there's a magnitude of different brands, but the big thing you want to pay attention to is the different shapes of the different weights and then what they are made of. So what you'll see here, these weights up top here are actually all tungsten weights. So what tungsten does is because it's so hard, you can feel the bottom extremely well. So if you're drop shining on a rock or a hard bottom, using tungsten can be a bit more expensive, but it's definitely going to help you feel the bottom a lot better. Sometimes feeling the bottom composition and being able to stop in the perfect place is what's going to help you get more bites. Now. On the bottom here, you also have a couple of lead weights, and you're going to notice that there are different shapes. Now when it comes to the different shapes, you're going to have these rounder weights here. These are going to be used when you're in rock. The rounded weight, or the rounded shape, I'm sorry, of these weights is going to help you come through the rock more clean, and it's going to allow you not to hang up as much. If you were to take one of these longer weights and try to run it in rock, you would hang up a lot and you would break off a lot. So now you might be wondering, well, then why do we have these weights? Because smallmouth, you know, they live in rock. Well, actually, a lot of smallmouth live in weeds. Um, it's a common misconception that smallies are always found in areas with rock. So um, to confuse smallmouth fishing a little bit more, I'm going to tell you that a lot of smallmouth actually do live in weeds. And these nice cylindrical shaped weights are actually great for fishing in weeds. They pull through extremely easily. Uh, and allow you to keep your presentation there for the smallmouth. So what you can see here is I've actually got a couple of different styles of hooks and I've rigged just a few baits up to give you examples of what those hooks look like when they're rigged. Now we're just talking about hooks here. I'll go over baits and where and why I like to use them a little bit later in the video. Now what you'll see here is what's considered to be a drop shot hook. So there's different kinds of hooks. There could be a mosquito hook and you can see it has a slight bend in the hook. This one is actually a gamakatsu split shot or drop shot hook. It's got a slightly longer shank and a little bit of a pointed bend instead of coming back directly to the eye. And then here, this is also a gamakatsu. This is a size one, and this is actually an EWG hook. And so most people, when they think of drop shotting, they think of this rig. This is the most common. So when you're gonna nose hook a bait, and this is a Get Bit Baits finesse worm, you're gonna nose hook a bait about a quarter of an inch in, and the hook's going to be exposed like this. That's probably the most common way for people to drop shot. Now you'll see here, this hook is actually rigged wacky style. So what that allows you to do when you're drop shotting is to wacky rig that worm and put it in a deeper presentation that you would a traditional wacky rig. And then what you have up here, this is a robo worm, and you can see that this is actually Texas rigged. So this worm here is going to pair with this weight because these two are going to be a lot more weedless when paired together. All right guys, so we've talked about our weights, we've talked about our hooks, now we're going to talk about leader line. Leader line is an extremely important component of the drop shot system. This is what your hook is going to be attached to. This takes all the abuse down on the bottom. It's being drugged through rocks, wood, going through the fish bites. So you want to make sure you get a quality lead line to rig up. So let's talk a little bit about what size lead lines I use and why I select the ones that I do. All right, so as you'll see here, we have a couple of different spools of our leader line. Now, you'll see that on the left here, I have six pound test 
Now on the right, I have eight pound test. Both of these lines are 100% fluorocarbon. Fluorocarbon is extremely important when you're drop shotting because it has less stretch than mono and it also is very abrasion resistant around rock. Oftentimes when you're drop shotting, you're going to be drop shotting around rock when you're chasing big smallmouth. Now I mentioned the different size in the line. If I'm on a really clear body of water where the fish are very finicky, I will go down to a six pound leader. At this point, you need to ensure that you have your drag set extremely perfect to make sure that you're not breaking off those fish. Now, preferably, I would like to use eight pound, especially if I'm around any sort of cover or any sort of weeds. In certain situations, I may even bump up to a 10 pound leader if I'm around a lot of heavy cover. I often drop shot around cover that most people wouldn't. I may drop shot around wood or cribs or man-made structure. Sometimes you will need to bump up higher than a six or an eight pound test. Another reason why I like fluorocarbon is it's easy to tie knots to braid, which leads us to our next section. We're gonna talk about what you're gonna be tying this lead line to and why I use the braid that I do. Next, let's talk about what our main line is going to be. So for my main line, I like to use PC Fun Lunker Braid. There's a couple of reasons why I choose PC Fun Lunker Braid. Now, there's a couple of reasons why I choose to use braided line as my main line on a drop shot. This is very common and this is what most drop shot anglers like to use. Typically, most anglers will use something between a 10 pound and a 15 pound main line. Now, by using a smaller diameter braided line, it allows you to make long casts. Oftentimes, when you're fishing in very clear water, you have to make very long casts to these fish. The thinner the diameter, the longer the cast you're gonna be able to make. Now, second reason people like to use braided line is that it has no stretch. So when you're fishing, and you're fishing in maybe 20 to 25 feet of water, that's fairly deep. If you have a line that stretches, you're gonna have trouble hooking up with those fish in that deep of water, and you're also gonna have troubles with sensitivity. Braid is an extremely sensitive line and allows you to feel everything on the bottom. That is perfect for drop shot. You'll see here, I have several different types of drop shot baits. I'm a firm believer that you have to have several different types of baits and several profiles if you wanna fit every fishing situation. Now, that being said, I believe that there are a couple of baits that are the most effective when you're drop shotting. So this one here is a Dualis V-tail shad. That's a very specific bait that I use when I'm on certain bodies of water. It's a good bait when you're out on the Great Lakes. It's a good goby imitator. The Kitek Swing Impact is a great bait fish imitator. Also great on the Great Lakes, but this one is one of the ones that I use very often as it imitates bait fish on just about any body of water and comes in a magnitude of colors. This next one is a robo worm. So this worm is great for drop shotting largemouth. I really like to use this worm, Texas rigged as I showed earlier, and I really like to drop shot this around weed lines and cover. Largemouth just seem to love the action of robo worms. Now the last two baits here are actually the baits that I use the most. The one here is a Get Bit Baits Salty Stick. It's a Senko style bait. The bait just above it is a Get Bit Baits four inch finesse worm. This is probably the bait that I use the most out of any other bait when I'm drop shotting. I love the profile that it has. And as you can see, it's a super soft bait. Um, it's, it's the perfect density and it catches a ton of fish. So we'll be using that bait today when we go out, this four inch drop shot finesse worm. And I'm actually gonna show you guys how to rig it and how to work it as well. So stay tuned. Now my favorite reel by far for drop shotting is the PC Fun Carbon X. Now there's several reasons why this is my favorite reel for drop shotting. The first reason is that this reel is extremely lightweight. This reel comes in at 6.8 ounces. So when you're drop shotting all day long, you're constantly shaking the rod. If you use a heavier reel, it's gonna put your setup off balance and it's also gonna end up causing fatigue over the day of fishing. So a light reel is paramount for balance and also paramount for fatigue. Now the second reason that I love my Carbon X is that it's a 6.2 to 1 gear ratio reel. So when I'm pulling in a big fish and it starts to run at the boat, 
that 6.2 to run gear ratio is going to be really fast and allow me to take up over 30 inches of line per revolution of the reel. What that does is stops me from losing big fish when they decide to make fast runs. It also allows me to make up ground if that fish decides to go for the surface and try to jump. I can keep up with the fish and try to keep the fish down in the water. Anytime you're battling a fish on a drop shot, you want to avoid that fish jumping because they have a tendency to then throw that hook. So that's why the Carbon X is by far my favorite drop shot reel. On top of that, the 10 plus 1 bearings are insanely smooth when you're battling fish. And a triple carbon drag system is going to help you land big fish as well. So the PC Fun Carbon X is a phenomenal drop shot reel. So when it comes to the rod that I select for drop shotting, I'm pretty particular. Everybody has their own styles and their own lengths, but I think most people agree that a medium light, fast action rod is going to be your best setup. Now when it comes to length, you're going to want something between a 7 foot and a 7 foot 3 rod. That length is going to allow you the ability to make those long casts as well as that fast action. In addition to that, when you're setting the hook on a drop shot, you're not setting the hook hard. You'll notice in this video that a lot of my hook sets are going to be reel sets. And basically what that is is you're just lifting your rod tip up and reeling quickly so that the hook pins into the fish's mouth. Okay, so now we've talked about all the components that go into a drop shot. Now we're going to talk about how you rig a drop shot. So it's always good to have a pair of scissors handy that are able to cut braid. Um, you're going to be tying a couple of different knots here that are going to require you to go ahead and cut some line. So make sure you have a pair of scissors handy. Okay, so the first thing we're going to start by doing is pulling off about six feet of your fluorocarbon leader. Now I like to have a long leader because a drop shot is a very light setup. You tend to break off and if you're fishing, rather than having to tie your whole setup again, you can break off a couple of times with a long leader. So I tend to just take an arm's length and that's about six feet. So a lot of people ask me, now what knot do you use when you're gonna tie a drop shot? My favorite knot for any time I'm tying braid to fluorocarbon is an Alberto knot. When it comes to knots, you always wanna look for knot strength. An Alberto knot is almost 100% knot strength and it's very small so it slides through the guides very easy. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna tie an Alberto knot here. Thing when you're tying an Alberto knot after you wrap it down the fluorocarbon and then back up the fluorocarbon is passing it back through the fluorocarbon loop that you made. Then you want to use your saliva and wet that knot and pull it tight. Then you're going to have two tag ends that you're going to have to cut. So this is where I mentioned those scissors coming in handy. Now my next step is going to be to tie on my drop shot hook. So I'm using that Gamakatsu, uh, it's a size two. So you're just gonna tie your normal Palomar knot. The Palomar knot is a knot that a lot of bass anglers use for a lot of different techniques. There's only one difference that you're gonna change at the end. So you're gonna give yourself, depending on the body of water you're fishing and the time of year, um, if it's summer and it's warm, you tend to wanna be a little bit further off the bottom, maybe a foot. Uh, if it's winter or it's really cold in your drop shotting, you might want to get closer to the bottom, maybe six inches. So I'm going to do right about a foot. Now when it comes to your weight, some of them have a nice little cinch clip in the top where you're able to just put about a little over a quarter of inch line through and slide it up and cinch the line in. Others may only have a metal ring, so you might have to tie a couple of knots. I like to go through and just cinch that line up. And you'd be surprised that line will stay very well. If it does get stuck, and you pull it out, you'll lose your weight rather than breaking off your whole lead line. So, so once you're done, this is what your drop shot will look like. You've got it rigged up, you've got your hook and your bait, and it comes down your lead line, down to your sinker. Now, you're ready to go fish. You gotta shake it really vigorously. Okay, you gotta start There's one. Oh, there's one. Oh, dude, that's a good one. Oh, that is a good one. <laughs> in the middle of trying to tell you the cadence and, uh, and it works. Oh dude, that's a giant. That is a giant. Come on. That's 
this hit right when I was trying to tell you the type of jigging cadence to do when you're drop shotting. Now there's two types of drop shotting. You can shake it really rigorously or you can swim it. And as soon as I changed my cadence and started to swim it, that brute ate. That is an absolute beautiful, beautiful giant smallie. What a stud. Check that one out, guys. Absolute giant on the Get Bit Finesse Worm. Drop shot in 33 feet of water. Check out that stud. Drop shotting is truly an incredible technique. Uh, I can't tell you how many big fish in my fishing career that I have landed on a drop shot just like this one. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I appreciate it. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and stay tuned for more awesome videos. As always, thanks for watching. Please hit that subscribe button and follow us on Instagram and Facebook.